which nutrients are associated with a younger brain age? To address that question, let's take a look at this recently published paper that investigated nutrient biomarkers of healthy brain aging. Now, the importance of this paper is that those nutrient biomarkers were plasma levels and not questionnaire based as questionnaires can suffer from recall bias as people have to remember what they ate or drank. And in terms of healthy brain aging, this too was an objective measure as it was determined by MRI. So the study included 100 people that were 65 to 75 years old, which then segregated into two, two groups. Those who had accelerated brain aging, this was defined as having an average brain age that was older than their chronological. So in this group, the average brain age was 65.1 years. And then a delayed brain aging group that had an average brain age of about five years younger, 59.7 years. Now, in looking at the traces, we can see that the accelerated brain aging group had more people that had an older brain age relative to their chronological age. So in counting the traces, I think I counted 10, 10 people in that group that had an older brain age relative to their chronological. Whereas in the delayed brain aging group, I only counted four people that had a, had a brain age older than their chronological. But note that even in the accelerated brain aging group, there were a lot of people that had brain ages that were younger than their chronological. But in the delayed aging group, there were a lot more people that had brain ages that were younger than the chronological. And we can see that for some people, their brain age was as much as 25 years younger than their chronological. So the delayed brain aging group, on average, five years, around five years younger than the accelerated brain aging group. But what about other variables? Were they different between the groups? So we sh that's important because if other variables are different between these two groups, then maybe it's not these plasma nutrient biomarkers, maybe it's other factors. So what were those other factors? And we can see them listed here on the left as measures. And then we've got our two groups, accelerated and delayed brain aging. And then when looking at the p-value on the right-hand side, none of these measures were different between these two groups of measures of brain aging. So let's dig down into that a little bit. So first, starting with the metabolic equivalent of VO2, or METS, which is a measure of VO2 max, we can see that those values are not different between the two groups, nor were uh, measures of physical activity or the resting heart rate, which argues against the role for the group that had delayed brain aging being more physically fit or more physically active. BMI was not different between the two groups, nor were its components height and weight. Waist and hip circumference were not different between the two groups as a measure of abdominal adiposity. And standard variables that are usually adjusted in models or model the standard variables that are included in models for adjustment, including sex, so the percentage of men and women, education and income were also not different between these two groups, which then goes back to our nutrient biomarkers. So which nutrients are associated with it, or at least in this study, associated with a younger brain age? And that's what we'll see here. This is the plasma nutrient profile of the delayed brain aging phenotype. Now, the good news is that some of these plasma metabolites can be tracked and potentially optimized. And that includes vaccinic acid, otherwise known as octadecanoic acid, gondoic acid, otherwise known as eicosanoic acid, EPA, fish oil fatty acid, EPA, uh, eco, eicosadienoic acid, and choline, which is probably more familiar, uh, you know, of all the nutrients on, the, on this list, that's probably the most familiar to most people. And the way I've been tracking that is with Iolo's at-home metabolomics kit, which besides these five nutrients also includes data for 600 others, discount link in the video's description. So what's my data? So we have, we've got levels of those five nutrients, plasma levels on the left. And then the goal is to keep the sum of these metabolites relatively high and avoid any age-related decrease. So what I'm doing is for each test, I'm taking the sum of these five plasma plasma nutrients, plasma levels of these five nutrients. And in 2023, I had five tests. And then taking the sum for each of these uh, five nutrients for each test, and then taking the average, so the 2023 average over those five tests is then 258 micromolar for these five nutrients. So then I have three tests in 2024. ND stands for not detected. And then same approach, sum of these five nutrients for each test, and then the average for, for the year-to-year, -year, looking at year-to-year -year changes, we can see that my current 2024 average is 456 micromolar. So 2024 is off to a good start. I am waiting for another uh, test 
That's uh, May 28th. I sent that data. It hasn't arrived yet. I guess uh, Iolo has been slammed with business. So I'll have four tests uh, coming up soon to analyze data. Now, the other plasma metabolites on this list can be potentially increased by diet. And I say potentially because increasing dietary intake is one way to potentially increase plasma levels of a given nutrient. But there are two other variables in that equation, which includes endogenous production, which may have nothing to do with uh, dietary intake, and also degradation. For example, the fish oil fatty acid, EPA, declines during aging, and that's not likely because people are eating less fish, but more so because of inflammation, which is well known to lead to uh, EPA and also DHA degradation. So how can we increase levels of these plasma nutrients or potentially increase these levels by diet? So starting with the first one, ALA, that's commonly found in foods like flax seeds, chia, and walnuts. Uh, lignoceric acid, which is a 24 carbon saturated fatty acid that's found at, or abundantly found in peanuts. And I'll put the link to that paper and the other papers uh, in the video's description. And then carotenoids, including lutein and zeaxanthin. Those can be potentially increased with green leafy vegetables. And these are low oxalate containing vegetables here, collard greens, lettuce, and kale. And then we've got some vitamin E isoforms, including uh, alpha tocopherol, which is found in almonds and sunflower seeds, but also red bell peppers. And then gamma tocopherol, which is abundant in pistachios, but also flax seeds, amongst other foods. And then last but not least, I wasn't able to find any PubMed references for docosa dienoic acid. So if anyone's come across a reputable source where we could potentially increase that by diet, uh, please share it in the comments and I'd be happy to give you a shout out in a future video. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with CyFox Health, which includes ApoB and also GrimAge, uh, green tea, diet tracking with coronameter, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.